Welcome to Movie Caps. Today I will show you a comedy, drama, family film from 2008 titled Marley and Me. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Newlyweds John and Jenny are running down the street in the middle of a snowstorm. To protect themselves from the cold, they dip their feet in the warm water of the bathtub and drink champagne. Jenny asks John if the storm is good or bad luck on their wedding day. Before he can answer, she concludes that it is good luck. John just stares lovingly at Jenny and asks her how he got so lucky. She then explains to him that it's part of the plan. After making a joke about why she married him, she tells him that the third step of the plan is to move to a warmer place and then the new couple makes out. As decided, the couple moves to South Florida and Jenny drives John to his job interview at a major metropolitan newspaper. Arnie, chief editor of the Sun Sentinel, interviews John, who reveals his wife is also a writer. Jenny is already waiting for him when he comes out of the building. After initially sulking, he tells her that he got the job. Excited, Jenny then tells him about the next step, which is house hunting. The couple are now settled into their new home and the first thing they do in the morning is read each other's article. John notices that Jen's article has been given a lot of space in the paper. As he flips through the Sun Sentinel, Jen asks him about the big story he wrote and he notices that it was edited out. Jen tells him not to worry and praises his article. Soon after, she changes the subject by throwing away a dead plant and says how can she take care of a baby when she cannot take care of a plant. The next day, John tells his friend Sebastian that Jenny may be thinking about kids. He tells John that the problem is the spare room in their house. Sebastian advises him to get a pet to delay the baby fever. He also tells him he's traveling to Colombia to cover a story and advises John to buy a Labrador because they are easy to train. John leads Jenny blindfolded to a puppy store and surprises her when they get there. As soon as she sees a bunch of puppies, her heart sets on one in particular, who keeps looking at her and seems very tame. The seller tells them they can have the puppy for a reduced price. Jenny calls him their clearance dog. Jenny has to leave abruptly for a business trip and asks John if he can handle the puppy. He assures her that everything will be fine and even says that he's jealous that she'll be covering a big tax evasion story. Jenny reminds him that they still have to give him a name. While driving home, John tries out a few names, but nothing sticks. Then he turns on the radio and a Bob Marley song comes on. The dog seems to like this song and John names him Marley. Once they are inside, John feeds him and comments on his big appetite. At night, he takes Marley to the garage, but he cannot sleep because of the barking, so he decides to take Marley inside. In the morning the room is trashed, so John leaves Marley back in the garage when he goes to pick up Jenny at the airport. A hurricane is raging as John reaches the airport. Jenny quickly gets in the car and asks him about the puppy. When the couple arrives home and opens the garage door, they are shocked to see its condition. Marley had viciously destroyed it and they couldn't believe that such a small puppy did so much damage, even flex tape can't fix this. One afternoon John is hanging out with Sebastian, who has just returned from his assignment in Colombia. As he talks to him, John ruminates on the fact that he isn't doing anything worthwhile. Sebastian gives him a pep talk and then two girls come to pet Marley. When one of them picks him up, he bites her and runs away across the whole beach. Eventually a stranger catches him and advises John to keep him on a leash until he is trained. With Marley growing up and continuing to be disobedient, even stealing turkey on Thanksgiving and running across the neighbor's yard, they decide to take Marley to a dog trainer. Throughout the class, Marley just wreaks havoc and is eventually kicked out of the class when he dry humps the trainer's leg. John makes this incident the first subject of his column, and the readers liked it very much. Over the next few months, John writes about events from his daily life, which mostly consists of Marley's antics. One day John and Jenny are walking Marley on the beach when they decide to expand their family. As soon as they arrive home, they begin trying. A few months have passed, John is having lunch with Sebastian when he tells him about his new job. John is impressed that Sebastian is freelancing for New York Magazine. As he talks to him, he realizes that he could do the same if he delayed the baby plan. When he arrives home, John tries to tell Jenny that they should wait a little longer with the baby. After listening to him, Jenny informs him that she is pregnant. John and Jenny are anxiously waiting for their first sonogram. The doctor checks a few times before calling a senior doctor, who informs them that she has had a miscarriage. As they drive home, John suggests that they go to Ireland for a few days. Jenny weeps inconsolably after she sits down. Both Marley and John remain by her side. The couple is preparing for departure and arranges a sitter for Marley, Debbie. Jenny has left Debbie a note with instructions on how to handle Marley. It says that Marley is a spirited dog, be sure to keep the toilet lid closed, or better the bathroom door in general, try to take him for a run or for a walk every morning. 
You can rest easy at night knowing Marley is an excellent watchdog and finally don't let Marley to get on any piece of furniture and chew on anything except his toys, other than that, enjoy him. When the couple returns, Debbie throws the file at them and lashes out her pent up anger, there were 11 thunderstorms while they were gone, the house is a wreck and as she walks out the door she says that Marley is something evil with a dog face. A few days later Jenny becomes pregnant again and this time gives birth to a baby boy, Patrick. One evening, as Jenny and John are talking about their lives before the child, they hear a scream outside. John runs to check what has happened and sees that his neighbor has been stabbed. This incident makes him determined to move to a safer neighborhood. He drives past a posh neighborhood and sees a house he likes. When he gets back home, he tells Jenny about it. Before he can say anything more, Jenny informs him that she is pregnant again. She even tells him that she is going to quit her job this time to be a more present mother. John asks his boss for a raise and he only agrees on one condition, if he can take the job permanently. John agrees and moves to the nicer neighborhood. Everything is perfect on the outside, but it's not so simple for Jenny. One day she gets fed up with Marley being a disobedient dog. The kids are always screaming and she's always exhausted. She cannot arrange a babysitter because everyone is afraid of Marley. When John comes home, she gives him an ultimatum, either the dog goes or she goes. To defuse the tense situation, he brings the dog to Sebastian's home, who reminds John to take the dog back in two days because he has a job in New York Times and will be moving. When John comes back home that night, Jenny apologizes to him and even asks him to bring Marley back. They both realize their mistakes and even agree not to have any more children for a while. After a few years, the Grogan family has a new member, a baby girl named Colleen. While greeting Jenny and the newborn baby, Connor announces that dad told them the baby's name is Whoops. John clarifies that it was just a joke and they take a picture. A few months have passed and the Grogans are now living a happy life. They are throwing the ball around the pool when the phone rings. John goes over and it is a call from Philadelphia Inquirer. When he returns to the pool, he tells Jenny that he has been offered a job by them as their new reporter. John quickly clarifies that he will not accept the offer because they are doing well in South Florida. On his 40th birthday, John takes Marley to the beach and decides to set him free for the first time. Marley immediately plunges into the sea and when other dog owners see Marley enjoying himself, they let their dogs go too. Everything is fine for a moment but then Marley pees and others look annoyed at his act. John quickly walks up to him and gets him out of the water, but it's too late, the damage is already done. When John arrives home, he is greeted by a surprise birthday party that Jenny has organized. After the party, he is sitting by the pool when Jenny asks him if he was surprised. She then kisses him and tells him that this was permission to take the job in Philadelphia. The next day, John quits his job and his boss gets a little emotional when he leaves. The Grogan family drives to their new home in Philadelphia, which is even bigger than the previous one. When they arrive, the first thing Marley does is break a decoration. John is writing serious articles in his new job, but his boss is not very impressed with his work. He wants John to write more with solid facts and with less opinions. When John arrives home, he is tackled by his family members on the porch and then Jenny asks them to go inside for dinner. As John and the kids climb the stairs, they notice that Marley no longer has the same energy. After going inside, John tells Jenny about his boss's remarks and even mentions that he misses his old job. In response, the usually understanding Jenny finally tells him to figure out exactly what he wants and be at peace with it. She tells him that her life is also different than she imagined, but she loves it the way it is. At night John lets the dog out, but a sudden storm begins and they go looking for Marley. After looking around for a while, John finds him curled up under a tree, looking visibly unhealthy. He takes him to the vet, who informs John that Marley's stomach is twisted. She prepares John for the worst, as this happens all the time, meaning that even if he gets better, he will soon suffer another stomach twist and might not survive. John tries to convince the vet, or rather himself, that Marley is not like other dogs, as he remembers the time Marley swallowed an answering machine. When John gets home, he sees that Jenny is reading cutouts of his columns. She says that Marley was in so many of them and that they are a great read. Even on her worst days, those columns had the power to cheer her up. Before she goes to sleep, Jenny even advises John to make a book out of them at some point. In the morning, John gets the call that Marley is fine and he can take him home. The next day, when Patrick and Connor come home from school, Marley greets them. They race with him to the house. A few days later, John is walking to work with his colleague when Sebastian calls his name. He stops to greet his former work colleague. At first they talk about work, but then Sebastian quickly changes the subject and asks him about his family. 
John tells him that he lives out of town and shows him a picture of them. Sebastian praises him for his beautiful family and they even laugh together about Marley's infamous incidents. When John arrives home, he sees that Marley is a little down and decides to take him for a walk. They find a nice place to sit and then John tells the dog to give him a sign when his time comes. At night Marley is lying in front of the fireplace when Jenny and John come to check on him. John sees that he is comfortable there and they decide to put a blanket over him. The next day, John tries to convince the chief editor to give him his own column. His boss reminds him that he quit his job as a columnist to become a serious reporter. John tells him that the job does not suit him at all and he could do much better writing columns. They are in the middle of a conversation when a colleague informs John that his wife is on the phone and says it's urgent. John goes home and Jenny informs him that Marley has been lying in the same place since morning and is becoming more unresponsive as time goes on. The kids are gathered around him, Patrick even cries and says bye before hugging him. Colleen gives him her sheep doll and asks Marley not to eat the other ear. John is waiting in the hallway of the clinic and the vet informs him that Marley's stomach has twisted again. She tells him that no other method will work and the only option left is surgery. John tells her that Marley is too old and weak to get through surgery. The vet then leaves the two of them alone for a moment. John tells Marley that he was the greatest dog in the world. After saying goodbye, John tells the doctor that it's time for Marley to go. After all these years Marley slowly closes his eyes. The kids watch old tapes of themselves and Marley is in each one of those. Colleen and Connor have drawn a picture and written their speeches. When it's Patrick's turn, he simply says that Marley already knows. Before John can bury him, Jenny decides to give Marley the necklace he once swallowed. As John walks towards the house, he is narrating why the relationship between man and dog is the best. Before going inside he sees his family, and Marley was a big part of making this family happen. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.